Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will explore the functionality of SEPA Direct Debit. Therefore, we create a business partner via transaction code BP, click on organization, select your grouping, for me it's already pre-selected, and then fill some dummy data. Let's say tester2, then I will store some more dummy information for the street address, the postal code, and also the country. Here it's for sure important that we are talking about a country within the SEPA region for this to work. Furthermore, if we scroll down, we need to maintain a communication language. Let me also choose German in this instance, and that's basically it. Now we go to the payments transaction tab over here. Here we need to select a country, then we must select a bank key. As you can see, the bank keys are already stored in your system, so you can utilize the search help over here. And we need to insert a bank account. Then you can click on this button over here, define IBAN. This will generate an IBAN number if the generation of IBAN numbers is enabled in your system. So we can click here on change IBAN if necessary, or in my instance, just click on continue. You can now see over here, the IBAN number is also filled. Now this is fine, we will save the business partner first. You can see a number was generated over here. Please be aware of this number, 1503. I will explain you later why. Now we go into the change mode and we select the role FLCU00 FI customer. By the way, if you want to find out more about this business partner concept, I will leave you a whole playlist of mine in the description of this video. So we select FLCU00 and please pay attention over here to this area because one more button will appear for the SEPA mandate to be maintained. Click on this one. Here you can now see FI SEPA mandates. So for the direct debit to work, so for actually directly debiting our customer when doing the payment run later on, we need to select our bank over here and we need to scroll to the right first of all, because there is a kind of hidden column. If we look on this one, it's called collection authorization. Let's actually inspect the search help. You can see over here states that the bank has collection authorization from the business partner for the account. And you can see that it is mandatory. If this indicator is not set, there is no bank collection, but we want to utilize the collection of money from our customer. So we will set it as active. Furthermore, please make sure that you have still selected this line over here. You can now click on FI SEPA mandates. You can see no mandate for our IBAN exists. Do you want to create a new mandate? We will say yes. And here you can see an error message, no payable company code for customer selected or no authorization for mandate. In our case, it must be the former one because the latter one, the authorization we just set via this button over here. So this means that before I can click on FI SEPA mandates, we need to select a company code over here. For me, it's already pre-filled, but you would need to either insert your company code via this button or directly over here. Then we need to store the mandatory information, which is the reconciliation account. And also in the customer payment transactions tab, we need to select at least the payment method. In our case, it would be direct debit. Select this one and now go back to the general data, select your bank account, click on FI SEPA mandates. And now you can see data for company code 1010 was applied for the mandate recipient. Click on continue. Now you need to insert a mandate reference number. So this number is actually a free text field. However, you and your company should think about this first because there should be kind of a logic within the numbering of your separate mandates. So for instance, you could say something like company code number and then an underscore and then just 0000, many zeros and a one. And the second one would receive two and so on and so forth. Here you can see the creditor ID. Let's actually inspect the search helper over here, how this was generated by the system. You can see specifies a cross country unique identification for the creditor of a SEPA direct debit. And you can see over here, the first two characters are the country, DE for Germany in this instance, and the characters three to four are the check digits. Then we have a specific business code. You can see also an example for Germany a ZZZ in this instance. And then the characters A235 would be the national identification characteristic for the creditor. Let's click on enter or continue. And now you can see a structure opened over here. On the top, we can just see some general information for the contract. In the newer releases, this will be displayed over here. And then quite important is the basic data. You can see status and validity. Right now it's set to to be confirmed. However, for this to be used in the end, we should set it to active. Then you can see a validity period. 
So you could also restrict the validity if necessary. And then you can see the payment type, either recurring use mandate or one-time mandate. As we want to use this here several times, we'll just select recurring use. And you can see over here an indicator called B2B mandate. Let's actually inspect the search help. This is also important. You can see for B2B mandates, specific rules apply regarding the deadlines and return options of payments. Payments with a B2B mandate are processed by the bank one day after presentation. So meaning that if you have a Zipa direct debit for a business, you should actually check this indicator. However, if you have a Zipa direct debit for a person, let's say an employee or also a person as a customer itself, then you should not select this indicator. Okay, here you can see in the administrative data, location of signature and signature date. These fields are also mandatory. So the location where the Zipa direct debit mandate was signed let's just say test city and the signature date would be today. Then you can click over here payer. This would display our payer information. So this data here is pulled from the address information we just maintained. Down here you can also see the IBAN and the SWIFT number or if it should be for an alternative payer we could also insert the information over here. Over here you can also see the payment recipient. Okay we can always click on check mandate. You can see the data does not contain any errors so we can save and you can see the mandate has been flagged for creation okay now we are finished here with the master data let's click on save this is just a warning message we can click on no and the business partner is finished however as i told you before you can see here the business partner number 1503 now it depends on your system settings. So I always advise you to check the customer general data tab over here because here you can see the number of the customer. It could be the case that it is the same as the business partner. However, in my system it is not. The system will still utilize this number over here for all the consecutive processes. So meaning that we need to work with this number in the end. If it's the same as the business partner, it doesn't matter for sure. However, in my case, I need to continue with the number 998 couple of 016. So I will take this number and copy it and then I will go to transaction code slash n fb70 to create a customer invoice because later on we will take this invoice for our direct debit payment run. I will insert my customer and an invoice date as well as an amount. Then I will say calculate tax and I will select the output tax. Scroll down a bit, select a GL account so this will be here an income account and an amount. Now the system requires me to also assign a controlling object. So I will go to the right of the screen. For now, I will just include here a cost center. However, it makes more sense to include an order or a sales order in the end. Okay, we have a green balance. We can click on post. You can see a document was generated in our respective company code. Now it's actually time to conduct the SEPA direct debit. Therefore, we navigate to transaction code slash n f110. Over here, we must select a run date and an identification like that. You can see no parameters entered yet. By the way, I have more videos about the automatic payment run. I will also leave you them in the description of this video. I've made one for the GUI and also one for Fiori. Let's go to the parameters tab. Here, we enter the posting date, documents entered up to, and also customers items due by. Then we select our company code, the payment method we set in our business partner master was E. The next posting date would be next month, let's just say. And then we include exactly our customer over here. Let's go to the additional log. Here as always, select due date checked, payment method selection if not successful, and line items for the payment documents. This is always important to display more information in the log. And over here we must include our customer as well. So far so good, we can click on save parameters. Then go to status and you can see parameters have been entered. Now we go to the proposal run. We start the proposal immediately. However, we do not create payment medium information yet because it's just a proposal. This is also best practice. Click on schedule. Then refresh the status. You can see payment proposal has been created. Let's now display the proposal. You can see it's green over here. So it found our customer. We can double click on this one and display the information, for instance, which accounts will be triggered and so on. Also, we can double click here again to display even more information like the amount that will be directly debited. Let's go back and back again. Now we click on payment run. This time we can click on create payment medium and click on schedule. The payment run is now running. We can refresh the status 
and you can see one generated, one completed. We can display the payment information via display payment run lock and here you can see exactly what has happened and what accounts were triggered. Now go back and in the upper corner, you can't see it right now, there should be a tab called environment. Click on this one and then click on payment medium, DME administration. Over here, you can see the payment information. You can select the data medium and then you can click in the upper corner on edit, download to download your medium and then send it to your bank. Okay, this marks the end of the video. I hope you liked it, it took a lot of effort, so I would really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. See you next time.